Welcome to the O'Connor Elder Law Channel. I'm your host, Melissa O'Connor. I'm a Florida-based elder law attorney who does estate planning, focusing on long-term care needs, commonly referred to as Medicaid planning, and I do probate, and I do it well. Today, I wanted to talk to you about the affidavit of heirs that's used in Florida probates for intestate um, cases, those people who die without a will. But before I do, I wanted to invite you to schedule a free strategy session with me at eldermeeting.com. Okay, so if you or your loved one die intestate, meaning you die without a will here in Florida and your estate needs to be probated, the personal representative of your estate will need to complete um, an affidavit of heirs. And it's also um, your, the petitioner too, if, if you're gonna go with a summary administration. Either way, um, you'll need to complete what we call an affidavit of heirs. And um, many times this is an annoying and frustrating process for my clients because um, this affidavit asks a lot of family history. They want to know who's related to who, when they passed away, and it goes pretty far down the family tree, um, all the way to grandparents and great grandparents. And if the decedent is in their 70s or 80s and lived a wonderfully long life, um, many times their surviving relatives don't know who the decedent's grandparents and great grandparents were, let alone when um, they died. So it can prove to be um, a frustrating exercise for many of my clients, especially since they're just, you know, having the loss of a loved one and now trying to put together a family tree history. It's like a homework assignment that stresses them out. Um, and so they commonly it's asked me, why do I even need to do this? And um, the reason is because when you pass away without a will, um, Florida law has a statutory procedure as to who inherits, right? Um, and we want to make sure that somebody um, outlines the family tree for the court and they've done it on a sworn affidavit form so that way they're under oath and there's the penalties of perjury and the court then can see what the person's family tree was to determine who are their rightful heirs and who should be inheriting their property. So many times I tell my clients to just do their best. If they don't know, we'll put unknown. Um, if we know that they're deceased, but we don't know when they passed, we'll say deceased, date unknown, things of that nature. But um, if you don't know who your, um, you know, the decedent's relatives are at all, even like the first line, like their siblings or their, their spouses or um, their parents, um, things of that nature, or their children. If you don't know if they're alive or dead or who they are, um, then we need to do a little bit more digging and there are services um, that we can use to help do that investigation. But many times people have that layer. It's when it goes a little bit deeper into aunts and uncles and grandparents that the waters sometimes get murky for families and it can become stressful. But anyway, I wanted to just share that with you because I know that the affidavit of heirs is a frustrating document for many of my clients when they're filling out. It's just um, one more paper that makes them have to brainstorm. Others find it a really fun exercise and something curious where they are able to um, kind of do some genealogy and family history and, and record uh, information that they use in the future and they, they find it helpful. And many just, it's just burdensome during that time of loss for them. But um, I hope that this information has been helpful to you. If it has, I ask that you like and share with others. And as always, you can schedule a free strategy session with me at eldermeeting.com. Thank you for joining me.